Okay, thank you, Kaya. So yeah, welcome again. I hope you, you've enjoyed the, the little presentation and uh, I hope we will have also interesting discussion here. Um, we are a little group, so I think it's nice if like everyone can just uh, say their name and their country and also maybe change um, on the on the sides uh, so, so we know uh, how we should uh, call you and also from which country you come. And so yeah, I'm Sofia. Uh, I come from France. Uh, I've been a coordinator and also volunteer um, in uh, in ESC. Um, yeah, so you don't need to to present yourself. Uh, we will also do a little icebreaker to know a bit more about you. But I would like just to to know your naming and country now. Um, hello from me. Uh, my name is Panayotis. I come from Cyprus and. Since I know that uh, my name can be a little bit difficult to pronounce, uh, you can call me Panas as uh, I have uh, written on my on, on the app. Okay, do you want me to talk? Okay, my name is Despina Piculi. I am from Athens, Greece, and uh, uh, I'm a partner of uh, two volunteer uh, teams. Uh, they called uh, Hopaholics and uh, Mentoria. I'm also a member of uh, Scouts. And uh, I'm very interested uh, of what uh, we are going to discuss uh, this afternoon. Thank you, Despina. So somebody else wants to, to talk? I can go next. I'm Chris from Cyprus. And um, I've been an EVS volunteer. So I'm re really interested in the topic. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Andras. I come from Hungary. Um, I'm doing uh, EVS and ESC, the new name, uh, coordinating within an organization, a municipal organization. And we are doing it for 20 something years. Okay. And I saw a lot of familiar faces. <laughs> cool. Okay, thank you, Andres. So I think uh, there's only one last person. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Alvin. I come from France and I'm currently a volunteer working for an Italian association near Rome. Nice to meet you. Cool. Thank you. So I give the floor to, to Kaya to ask, uh, ask some questions. Yes, so uh, first let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Kaya. I'm from Slovenia. I'm actually a local volunteer in uh, Social Academia, but uh, I was a mentor uh, to our volunteer. Uh, so mostly I'm interested in the ESC uh, projects and I'm planning to do my first uh, volunteering project next year. Uh, so for the next, uh, like, uh, icebreaker. Uh, I we would uh, we would play some game with uh, switching the cameras. So I will tell you uh, some uh, question, and uh, if your answer is yes, then you uh, switch the camera on, and if your answer is no, you switch the camera off. Uh, so, are you okay to go to the first question? Okay, so switch the camera on. Who has a C in, the, in your name? So if you have a C in your name, you switch the camera on. And if you don't have a C in your name, you switch the camera off. Okay. 
Yeah, at the moment it's not written, so <laughs> but I have. Okay. Hey, don't cheat. Huh? <laughs> oh, I have. I can show you my ID card. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I trust you. <laughs> okay, so the next question. If you see the snow in the last week, switch the camera on. Nobody. No one I've seen snow. Okay, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> okay, next question. If you were uh, flying, so with the plane, in last year, switch the camera on. I'm the only one who didn't fly then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. If you're uh, at the moment a volunteer, switch the camera on. Can you repeat? If you are a volunteer at the moment, Spina and Alvin. Okay. Next question. If you were a volunteer in past, okay. Everybody. Okay. Switch the camera on if you are a coordinator. In ESC or generally? Yes, in oh. ESC project. No, no, not, not anymore. So we have only one coordinator here, okay. Yeah, but I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so next question. If you were a mentor in past, switch the camera on. So a mentor to ESC or EBS volunteer. Okay. And who is a mentor at the moment? Yeah, and Despina and I are our mentors. But you didn't get Despina, you also a volunteer? I don't hear You're you. You're muted. You are still muted now. You just have to, to <laughs> un unmute. I'm sorry. No worries. I'm sorry. I told you about uh, the two organizations, uh, Hopaholics and Mentoria. Uh, with Mentoria, we are trying to bring uh, volunteerism in uh, schools. And uh, with Hobaholics, uh, we help uh, in different uh, places. For example, uh, on the 10th of uh, February, we pull a big uh, track uh, of uh, things and go uh, to Oh, women's jail in uh, Thiva, uh, where they live with the uh, newborn uh, children, with their newborn children, they are together. Uh, so that was uh, our last uh, thing uh, we done. Okay, thank you for- And I, I was responsible for this action. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So Okay, yeah, I think you have uh, one last question. Yes. So the last question is, who wants to be a mentor to ESC volunteer? Okay, so Andres and Alvin, you don't want to be mentors. All right, cool. So thank you for uh, answering the questions.
Um, so we will slightly, slowly move on to, to our topic, as you, we already know. So what is your relationship to ESC? And if you've been a volunteer, a mentor, or anything else, um, I will now uh, share you a link of a little quiz that we can all do. Um, so everyone can uh, answer the question on their own. Oh, okay, Kaya, you're so fast, thank you. Uh, everyone can uh, answer the question, but we can also, while answering the question, discuss uh, all of this together. So I will share my screen. Um, so I know sometimes when you have this the, the quiz and the share screen, it's a bit like it's not so nice to see it. So tell me if it's uh, annoying that I share it and if you just wanted to have it on your on your browser. Okay, so we have the first question is this, uh, what in your opinion is the top quality of a mentor? So you can answer anything you like. Maybe you can tell me because uh, I'm I'm not sure I can see the answers with Survey Monkey. So you can tell me uh, when you've decided. I will check in the answers in. Ah, okay, you can see them. Okay, great, great. Okay. I will decide. So did you all answer? I'm not sure I understand the second question. All the images seems okay to me. Mm. Mm, I, I sorry I didn't answer the question. So let me see. Okay. So maybe we can a bit like go through uh, uh, all the images. I mean, there's no like necessarily a wrong question, but I mean, so the first one would be more or less like a relationship when someone is uh, comforting someone else. Uh, the second one would be uh, people doing like touristic activities. The third one, it's more in a professional, um, professional moment, professional atmosphere. And the last one would be like cooking, so. All right, thanks, I think I got it. <laughs> okay, no problem, okay. Okay, I will choose this one a bit randomly. Okay, what can a volunteer bring to a mentor? Mm -hmm. so if you want to comment the questions and the answers, uh, feel free to open your mic and do so. We can discuss a little bit about the question and the answers. When I finish. Okay. So who would you prefer to be your mentor? You can tell uh, which one you choose. Please, we want to know. And why? Okay, for instance, I choose Remus Lupin because he's my favorite character of Harry Potter. Uh, I'd be choosing uh, Remus as well because he had this really adventurous side to him. And I really <laughs> like that. Nice. And the other, who would you choose? Do you know I all the characters? Who got murdered, but just because I like her, I don't know. Every character seemed okay to me. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just like depending of uh, which kind of uh, mentoring style do you prefer. <laughs> okay. Um, so, and then uh, I think it's the last question if I'm not wrong, or maybe not. Um, what can a mentor bring to the volunteering experience of the volunteer? So you have integration in the community, support with learning process, the best drug and being available 24 seven. So you choose. So we can tell, you can tell us uh, which one did you uh, choose and why do you think so? For me, I chose support with the learning process. 
because integration in the community, it can happen from local volunteers in the organization too. Mm -hmm. And it's a, I think it's different to be in the same age group as the people who you interact with in the community. And something that is lacking, that was lacking, the, someone supporting the learning process and not needing to finding out myself. So I found my own way of for my learning process, let's say. Okay, thank you. Did you have a mentor during your volunteering? I did, but it was a mess of changing mentors. Okay. And I figured out that I didn't really technically need one. I mean, the project called for one, but I personally was in a point in my life where I could take control of my learning. And um, I ended up being kind of like an unofficial mentor for the rest of the volunteers. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, I will take also your questions. I don't know if anyone else has something to say. Uh, maybe I will say something about the learning process. Mm -hmm. That was, I was missing really for the all first, uh, first four slides. Uh, basically, now this, uh, you know, uh, throughout the years of this uh, EVS and ESC, it has been changed very a lot uh, instead of integration mm -hmm. and being close friends and next to the volunteers uh, in 24 7. Basically, um, our approach is now this more on the learning rather than the first three, what I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mean uh, as a coordinator, you were a bit like doing all of the different roles? Not really, not really. Uh, the approach of the organization uh, changed. So okay. at first we were thinking that, oh, it's very much needed to integrate the volunteers into the society. Uh, no, uh, volunteers found it. Um, their space and their peers, basically. Um, and then, uh, you know, there were sometimes very questions on the I would say on the all behalf of the organization, shitty questions like, okay, I'm total drunk and I'm lost in the town. Where where can I go and how can I go home? Sorry, it's responsibility. Mm. So you have already a, a tool in your hands, Google map and something like this, go home. Yeah, okay. So it's it's not 24 seven anymore. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> All right, so thank you. I don't know if you have more things to say about the quiz, if you want to go back about the question or there's something you want to discuss. Um, if you do, uh, we can discuss about it. Or, and if you don't, we can begin to talk about the tool that we prepared with, uh, with Kaya. No, no question? Okay. Um, so what we did, we've done this questionnaire that is now uh, in the form of a, a Google uh, survey, but then we also made, uh, so actually the final outcome is a, is a PDF also with all the questions you will see, and we can also share it. Um, so the idea that we had is that, um, so there's a lot of volunteers with different uh, interests, with different characters, with different uh, background. And um, there's also a lot of different people who could want to be a, a mentor or actually think maybe they cannot be a mentor and it's not really clear. So our idea was to do um, uh, a tool that would like help the uh, organization to to match the profile of the volunteer and the mentor and as well to help a bit the the future mentor understanding better what a mentor can be uh, and of course it has to be sought as something that is not alone it's also like you have also like face-to-face -face meeting with the coordination and um the coordination knowing the volunteer so there's also a lot of other things but that can be a tool that can be um, easy uh, for the, the participant to use uh, in order to, to get for the organization to get to know them a bit better. It's a bit like kind of an uh, application form uh, for the future mentor. So here, yeah, you have, as you see, um, a little uh, explanation about um, why uh, 
a mentor can be can be interesting uh, for for a volunteer or for an organization. So uh, I can let you read the little paragraph if you want. You will also uh, get the questionnaire on your mail. Uh -huh. As like uh, all other tools from other groups. Yes. And the points uh, of the questionnaire is like we wanted to make uh, some basic tool, so uh, which uh, could we, which we could just uh, send to different organization and they could use it. But it's a little bit uh, challenging to make a questionnaire. Uh, which could so, which could select the question uh, answers uh, to different uh, groups, so to different organizations. Uh, uh, so we just uh, make a PDF, which could uh, send, which could be sent to organizations, and then uh, every coordinator uh, make a questionnaire, uh, which is uh, perfect to their organization and the situation. It's just like um, like a support, but of course that has to be adapted depending on your philosophy, but also like the where the the volunteering is taking place. Uh, also, if there's a lot of other international volunteers, of not, I mean, there's a lot of questions that that come into uh, the the question of like what what do you need as a as a tool for to choose a, a mentor. Okay, so let's go to the first question. Uh, so yeah, first question, important question is why do you want to be a mentor? So maybe at this point, um, the person doesn't really know uh, what a mentor can be, and that's also interesting. I think to to begin with the with the just the maybe what the people imagine a mentor is, and um, maybe then to go back later on uh, on the answer that the person could give. Um, so a question that also Chris talked about it earlier. So are you available for the whole time of the project? Because yeah, uh, having a, a mentor that comes and then not, and then actually studies and doesn't have time, et cetera. It can be also very challenging. Um, that also happened to me as I was a volunteer. So some a lot of people were really happy to be mentors, but at the end they were not really committed to it. So it's nice to know their um, uh, availability. Okay, then to know like, okay, so current occupation, especially to get to understand like how much time the person have, uh, but also to situate them, I guess. Um, educational background. So this question was sought a bit, uh, not really to know uh, how much diploma has the person, but uh, more what uh, does, uh, what did he or she study before or um, yeah, what is like his or his professional interest or uh, professional um, skills, um, especially because a lot of the volunteer also have maybe didn't study yet or want to study again. So that can be also interesting to, to connect them. Okay, then we have connection to the NGO. Um, if the person already has been involved in youth work and um, if the person already did a volunteer service or lived for a long time in the different country. Mm. Okay, how familiar are you with views work in NGO world? Also, if you want to comment anything, just feel free to open the mic and tell me, tell us. Mm. Okay, so the question about uh, administrative stuff that, uh, um, so the, of course, a lot of the administration comes to the um, to the coordination, but not all of them. Um, in France, we have, uh, and I guess also we talked about it with Gaia, a lot of social institutions that can help you, but that can also be very complicated. So that's where also the, the mentors, uh, knowing the, the community and the institution can, uh, can help. Uh, so we thought it was interesting to ask this question. And also like what, the, what kind of support uh, from the organization the person needs. Okay, so now it's more about the languages and the social competencies uh, of the person. So first to, to situate a bit like which language uh, the person speak and how good. Um, another way to put it was uh, which language would you like to speak with your volunteer, but this way we can also know the level of the person a bit more. 
Um, so for us, it's not necessarily that necess necessary that the person actually speaks English or the mother tongue of the language of the volunteer, even though the volunteer uh, don't speak yet the language of the country, because it's also um, another way, other ways to communicate are possible, especially now with smartphones and everything. So it's, it's just to, to situate, it's not uh, like a criteria for the person to be super multilingual or whatever. Okay. Um, then like a bit more like personal, uh, like knowing how the per person is. Um, so, okay, how would you react? Uh, how do you react when things are not meeting your expectation or your plans? to know if the person is more on the freaking outside or in the adapting side. Uh, explain your answer. And then another question about like, yeah, different mindset. That's also like kind of, um, uh, I would say intercultural skill, uh, not necessarily between two culture, but just between two mindset, two different uh, way of, uh, of, of thinking, of seeing the world. So also that's, important to to know how the person still um, like uh, self evaluate uh, their their skills to yeah how they feel when when people are not thinking the same way that they are and like about being a good listener or not and uh, yeah situation of conflict so also the same self self evaluation of how the person is uh, usually reacting when uh, they are in front of a conflict and I think, no, it's not the last question. Um, okay, if the person is able to notice when uh, people uh, feel bad, even if it's not said clearly. So it's kind of a lot of uh, introspectual questions. Uh, and okay, also to go back to the commitment. So, okay, if you're usually someone who's committed or not and explain it. Okay personality so yeah this is more about like characteristic if the person is someone who talks a lot who or not if it's someone who likes to hang out with a lot of people or uh, most preferably little groups if the person is more introverted or extroverted and then ask them what they think are their strong and weak points and now it's more about yeah hobby and interest so maybe like ask the person the causes that are important to them. And of course they can write uh, other things uh, if nothing that is mentioned here or if there's something else they want to add, um, what they are interested in. Uh, yeah, also hobby. And yeah, now it's the, okay, I think there's been a problem. Okay, so now it's the personal information but normally it should be less. <laughs> Uh, it's just to to like have just infos and yeah and so now that would be uh, uh, the last uh, uh, side of our questionnaire that is okay wh what kind of tool do you prefer so maybe it's instagram messenger phone call whatever and then the activities they would like to do with the volunteer so we proposed a lot of different things of course other things as are possible and um, then so uh, learning process so maybe that's kind of little ideas just to to put the seed that also being a mentor is not only uh, doing like hanging out and doing uh, activities together but also talking about um, the evolution of the of the volunteer and also usually noticing like most of the time the mentors are also a bit like uh, a bit um, um, older than the volunteer but even if it's not always the case but maybe they are also more able to to see like how the the volunteer evolve and uh, also like it's nice to to show to say okay now i realize that the in september you were telling me this and this and now i realized you you changed about this so that's also nice to have also like some um noticing of the situation but also to give really concrete thing i thought uh we thought so we're talking about it around the coffee uh, keeping notes in a notebook, doing creative project together. So maybe uh, all through the year or just uh, uh, midterm or at the end. And of course, uh, why not helping her or him writing uh, the use path? 
uh, maybe that's also a good thing to 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 know like from where the person uh, arrived and uh, where where they went with the with the project and also i guess probably the person will will not be always very familiar with what the use path is so there's also something that can be discussed during a training for instance and at the end so a, pic a picture a perfect day with your volunteer and more question Voila, so that's basically our our tool. So now I'd like to know, do you want, maybe I can share you the link. And um, if you want to, yeah, to have feedback, uh, give you feedback about it. Um, yeah, you, I give you the, the mic now. Um, thank you for this. This actually looks uh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was wondering, is there something uh, similar that you would use to, uh, I don't know, send out to the potential mentees to better match them with, uh, with the mentors? Yeah, so an idea would be to kind of like just uh, almost <laughs> copy and pass the questionnaire and maybe adapt some of the questions. So if um, true that our questionnaire was very focused on the on the on the mentors, but I know like for the organization I'm volunteering volunteering with that actually I'm a mentor with them. Um, the volunteer and us we kind of had the same questionnaire that was a bit like okay lighter than this one, but that can also uh, be a, a good way. Also because it really depends of the of the situation. Like sometimes the the hosting organization know the mentors more. Sometimes they know the volunteers more. So. I guess it depends, but that would be an idea. And I wanted to ask, um, are usually the um, someone who would fill out this um, uh, questionnaire to be a mentor, uh, are they open to people that they don't even know, but they are interested in being a mentor in your organization at least? Or is it usually people who already work with the organization or past volunteers, local volunteers, I guess. Someone who has a link. Yeah. Um, so maybe, Kaya, you want to uh, answer for your organization? Well, uh, I think um, it uh, depends on uh, organization. For example, in my organization, it is more like uh, it's small organization and uh, we have uh, about, I think, there were max uh, three uh, uh, three volunteers uh, at the time, and we have a lot of uh, local volunteers. So uh, our mentor, uh, I mean coordinator of the EV of the EVS and ESC system, uh, she actually uh, contacts people uh, who are uh, like close to organization, uh, which are more active uh, local volunteers. Uh, and um, just ask them if they want to be a mentors. Uh, and also we have like a, a bit different system. So we have one mentor who was like official mentor uh, doing all the meetings and, uh, and this uh, formulate uh, stuff and this. And there are a lot of uh, like informal mentors, uh, which were like uh, hanging out, uh, showing the place and this stuff. Um, but as I uh, talk with others, uh, some of the organizations which have more uh, participants, uh, more volunteers, they uh, when they need mentors, uh, they make open call and uh, like applications like this. So it really depends on the organization and how much uh, volunteers they have. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for my uh, so the organization I'm uh, with whom I'm a, I'm a mentor, it's mostly network and also network of mentor. Like for instance, a friend of mine who had never to do like who never did ESC or whatever, just um, I thought it could interested her, so I talked to her about it. But also I think it's a, also a long process, and maybe next year it will be interesting to do a open call also for for mentors. And also like for instance, an idea that uh, we'd like to to 
we'd like also that some uh, local person who don't really necessarily know what is European ESC, uh, who is yeah, who are not really aware of this, and maybe just live in the neighborhood of the volunteers, things like this. Because so Marseille, I'm from, I live in Marseille, and it's a, it's also a big city. We would like also to involve those young people, so maybe then they are also like more pushed to to do a ESC again, and they get that it's also for them. So that that would be also the uh, a name that we have and that's why also we we wanted to create so a tool like this and also do some trainings to really uh, make the person comfortable uh, with understanding what what's a, which kind of mentors they can be because now i'm thinking after this that in my own experience that one mentor shouldn't be expected to do the same to actually that both things to integrate in the community and also keep track of the learning outcomes and the learning path mm -hmm. because I think it's um, two totally different things that maybe two different personalities mm -hmm. would um, be interested in doing that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, actually, from my point of view, uh, the integration in the in the local community is something that is great and important, but that is not 100% fundamental in mentoring. I mean, it is, but for instance, also with integration, I think like, I don't know if you, like I'm a mentor of, uh, of someone and maybe uh, he or she is interested uh, to have dinner with my mom because they actually never met like, uh, French family, because, like also as a volunteer in different countries, sometimes it's really hard to get into like this, this like uh, familiar uh, private sphere. So that's also what I, I understand sometimes with uh, with the local community. But the learning process is really something we want to also enhance with the with the um, the presence of the the mentor. Um, also, I guess like some of the, of the idea of the mentor is like, okay, bring things to the mentor, it brings things to, to the volunteer and it can also light uh, the, the shoulder of the coordinator sometimes. So especially on the learning process. From yeah. my... And the whole idea that um, the mentor shouldn't be the person who gives the tasks mm. to, the, to the volunteer. That's why in the organization that I was uh, volunteering in, there were only two people working. It was a really small organization. So finding a mentor, it was really hard for other people that were close to the organization to understand the concept of what EVS was at that point, mm -hmm. but also for the organization to understand how do we, I involve a mentor? How do I find a mentor that would be the right fit if they, um, if they don't really understand their place in the organization because they're not supposed to be part of the organization mm -hmm. or at least they shouldn't give the tasks. So in such a small organization, how do you attract people to be mentors if they know nothing about the whole youth work aspect? Mm -hmm. And just uh, adding to what Chris is saying, uh, me also coming from Cyprus, one of the biggest problems that we're faced with is actually uh, the lack of a mentor network. So this limits, uh, this limits access to this kind of resource. So uh, occasionally there may be people who want to offer themselves for this, but uh, the the positions that require that require their services are not visible to them and maybe they're not accessible to them so this is uh, another thing that maybe we can talk a bit about okay andras you had something to answer to chris uh, maybe not to answer it just to add things that uh, i was uh, having a, <laughs> let's say uh, reading and then uh, discussion with our finance uh, in our organization. Yeah, my organization is not really small. Basically, uh, we have about uh, 300 part-time employees and uh, 60 full-time. And youth work is uh, part of it. And our organization is managing the culture on behalf of the city as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, yeah. So the questionnaire, what you made up, 
it's based on non-profit uh, at, at non-governmental organization so it can be a little bit uh, modified to mm -hmm. the organization so it could be applied for hours if we want to use that um, but what i want to say is uh, so in the program guide of the es is absolutely not clearly written that uh, the mentor uh, should be or must be or how to be um, external or internal so yes in the hungarian national agency we had a discussion so it's it's, it's not clearly stated at all so if you are taking and thinking and then requesting to be involved an external person and there's still a clear answer for yes and no yes this is what i want to point out and the other thing that uh, and the hungarian national agency only allows uh, for those people to uh, interact as volunteers and uh, not sorry volunteers uh, mentors who are finishing a, a traineeship uh, program for mentors okay that's organized by the national agency so these two things and as well we are in hungary um yeah lack of volume uh, lack of volunteers and lack of mentors too yeah so quite a lot of young people would like to be mentor to finish the volunteering yeah. but there's education background yeah. or approach is a little bit different so the yeah forum party and being with foreigners rather than on education purposes yeah thank you thank you yeah similar situation in uh, Slovenia uh, like you said uh, it's not clear if we, uh, if the mentor should be internal or external because in one hand it's good uh, to that mentor uh, know something about the organization and uh, maybe uh, youth work and NGOs in general but on the other side uh, usually external people at least that uh, as I see in uh, my country, is the problem that uh, people don't know a lot uh, or pretty much anything about uh, youth work and this stuff. Uh, and also, uh, I see the problem that uh, people doesn't want to participate in uh, volunteering. Uh, in uh, I mean, they, they just don't want to do anything uh, without be paid. Um, I don't know. Uh, it is also a problem of uh, of the system, um, and uh, and also about uh, ESC and this volunteering. I see that uh, that people only know Erasmus by uh, study exchanges and not about volunteering. And also, when I was uh, presenting these programs on workshops, people were were just like, "Oh my God, it's actually existing!" Wow. But actually, everyone uh, in this age can take a part. Maybe th there has to be like there is a system for having a pool of trainers in these kind of uh, projects in Erasmus Plus. For example, it would be great to have like a graded network of a pool of mentors that they have the training and they can uh, still, they are youth workers and they're not part of the organization, so maybe it covers that part, but they are people who can actually have structured and organized time with the volunteers and especially for the learning process. Because, and the, um, the integration to the, um, to the community that they live in could be through local volunteers. So. It's a separation of uh, uh, people who are interested in meeting new people. So they would be perfect for that. And then the more, I wouldn't say serious, but the more um, knowledge-based work that should be about processing the, the process, maybe would be better like that. Okay, Corina is uh, <laughs> secretly talking with us with, with the chat, as you might say. I did not want to interfere to interrupt. 
I'm I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost here. I actually came in just to, you know, like they do it in in live events when there's somebody popping in the room for a little photo and taking the vibe. So I was I was just hearing what you're saying and there is this uh this initiative called Mentoring Under Construction. It's a, a new initiative um by uh, the ESC Resource Center and a few NAs. So they are actually trying to create this a community of mentors which will not be belonging to one country only, but it's rather European. So it's still in the project phase, the beginning phase, but if you are interested, you could you could look it up and, and join and join the this group and possibly the community that is building up. Yeah, thank you for bringing it up, yeah. Yes, my pleasure. Just, uh, just this, <laughs> I, I will re re withdraw. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Corina. I, I think it's really, yeah, it's really interesting. Also, um, I've been interested in the idea of the the difficulties. So, for instance, uh, what you say, Andras, in, uh, in Hungary, that at the same time, you have like problem finding mentors and at the same time, the, uh, the, the, oh, sorry. Uh, the national agency is also requiring uh, some like square, uh, uh, yeah, like training and like knowing who is the person is. So I imagine it's uh, it's not uh, so easy uh, for me. I know that the so it's kind of the the mentoring in my organization is um, a project from the coordinators that we like. There's no funds uh, for the training, so it's just they take time to to find the mentors to. Uh, Okay, two minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they take time to find the mentors to do the training, etc. But uh, there's no money for neither for the mentors, neither for the organization. That's a, so that's also interesting if the national agencies are thinking about uh, the fact that mentors can actually be important in the learning process of the volunteer. Okay, uh, no worries, Despina. Thank you for, for being with us. Um, <laughs> ciao. Hi. Bye bye, thank you. And yeah, and, uh, Alvin, you leaving too? Okay. Yeah, so you can also, yeah, thank you, Kaya. Uh, you can also uh, write everything in the in the Padlet. So or maybe things we, we can keep in mind for later and also for improving the tool. Uh, but I, I get, I mean, for me, uh, the, the question also of the, the funding of uh, this work that is a work uh, is also super, super important and also how we can um, uh, um, like give it value at the end also for, for the mentors because it's still like times and uh, it requires time, it re requires uh, a lot of uh, different qualities. Um, sorry, I've been a bit stressed with the two minutes of IoT, so. I don't know. I don't want to like finish now. I think there's a lot of interesting things we can, uh, we could still talk about. Um, Maybe yeah. if someone uh, has something like some um, conclusion or some uh, ending, uh, something in in their minds, uh, you can share with us or something uh, we forgot uh, to mention. I think it's a huge subject that we can have a whole training course about this anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, Corina had training course about mentoring, so she's really the good also person to, to talk about with her. She also helped us a lot with the, with the questionnaire. So, so yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a whole subject, so I hope it, uh, it could give you some uh, some ideas and uh, that maybe you will use uh, our tool and adapt it for for your uh, own organization so yeah you will uh, get it per mail i think in the next days and yeah i guess uh, that's it thank you for sharing your tool with us you're welcome thank you for being part of the <laughs> of the the workshop no, it, it it has been a blast thanks it, <laughs> uh, it was really nice Okay, so maybe we can all go back to the big... Uh... Thanks a lot, everyone in Sofia. <laughs> Thank you, Erwin. <laughs> Andras, do you have some words for the end? Yeah, I said thank you. Mm -hmm.